Are you a sandbagger? If you are, I would recommend you turn off this podcast now because you aren't going to like what's coming. Let's tee it up. Welcome to Data Access Golf, your home for rapid golf improvement. And now, from the thin air of the Rocky Mountains, next on the number one tee, your host, Aaron Stewart. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Data Access Golf. I appreciate you being here. Thank you for the comments. They are picking up. I am trying to reply to all of them, and I appreciate it very much. So the um, topic of this podcast, it's been on my mind for a while. It's something that I have been struggling with for a while. When I first joined the club that I'm at now, uh, way back, boy, 10 years ago now, I guess it is, I really enjoyed playing in all the tournaments. It was just fun to be part of a club and start getting to know the guys and playing in all these tournaments. But I quickly became pretty dismayed with the whole concept of how the handicap system works. And it was very hard for me to understand how I could go out and shoot a lower score than somebody and then lose to them. It just didn't make any sense to me, right? I mean, what other sport does that? You you go to, you know, it's not like Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls back in the time didn't come in and say, you know what, we're 15 points better than you. We're going to spot you 15 and let's see how it goes from here. It's never done that way. No other sport that I can think of where you do that. Hey, you know what? You guys have a much higher batting average than we do. So let's kind of split the difference and you give us a couple runs. It doesn't make any sense. Now, I've always heard people talk about this, this handicap thing as a way to level the playing field. Well, no, it's not. I mean, you still go out there and get your head beat in by somebody who's way better than you, but you somehow or another, because you got a couple strokes, you actually end up winning? I, I don't get that. I don't understand that. That's like, uh, uh, honestly, that is socialism. Okay? The handicap system is nothing more than socialism in the golf game. And I, woo, I don't like it. I, don't, I understand why people brought it up because th- this is the problem that some people who had their identities all wrapped up in their ability to play good golf and to win every once in a while came up with the handicap system. Right, because they got tired of losing, so they came up for came up with a way where they could game the system and still win after they just got beat badly sometimes. So the handicap system to me makes no sense. I don't understand it. It, it doesn't work for me, and so I have quit playing net tournaments. I'll go play a scramble because that's pretty much straight up. I don't like the scrambles where they start trying to mess with your strokes based on everybody's handicap. Whatever. I'm okay getting beat. If somebody's better than me and hands it to me, good. Good for them. They are more skilled than I am. I'm okay with that. I just don't understand why we have such a problem with, with losing. Right? If somebody's better than us, that should be okay. But, but not in golf. So I guess paying you know, X amount for your country club membership or, you know, $500 for a a, a set of golf clubs or whatever it is, $500 for just your driver nowadays, that somehow or another, because we've spent so much money, we feel like we deserve to win sometimes, even though we just got beat badly every single time. So I don't get it. It doesn't make any sense to me, but it's part of the modern golf game now. And so if you are in a club and you want to play in tournaments, then you really don't have a choice. Okay, so I have a couple ideas. No, I have one idea. I rarely have more than one idea a day, and this is my idea. Okay, so if we're going to continue on this disaster of, uh, you know, this path of handicapping everybody, then everybody has to play by the rules, right? You have to turn in every single score. I don't care if the rough was longer than you were used to. I don't care if you had to borrow your wife's clubs. I don't care if the greens were just been punched and sanded. It doesn't matter to me. Post it, right? Until the club tells you not to post, which here in Utah, I think it's November 1st, right? It just becomes so bad that they don't want you posting, right? That's an easy way to get your handicap up is, is play 
during uh, November when nothing's mowed and it's freezing cold and the ball goes nowhere, right? You can start shooting in the hundreds and get your handicap up. So they wisely shut it off, but that's about where wise and handicap stop right there. So let, let's do this. If, if we're going to do handicap and everybody's, and, and again, with our member guest at the club I'm at, which is one of the most mind numbingly boring formats anyway, but that's beside the point. L let's just say this. When you're going into a handicap tournament, can we just say, look, everybody from handicaps 10 to 20 is in this group and then throw the handicap away and just play straight up. Everybody who's, you know, nine and under, you're straight up scratch, go out and play and enjoy yourselves and just see who can come out on top. That's how everybody, uh, every other sport does it. Right In the NBA, you've got only the very best players who make it that far. They're the ones who get drafted. That's the handicap processing, right? So now they're in some kind of a group, an elite group, right? And that, the teams are willing to pay them big bucks to be there. That's an elite group. And then they just play straight up. In the college ranks, everybody is pretty much straight up. Alabama is way better than everybody else right now in college football, but they don't have to play to somebody's handicap and try to beat them that way. They're just better than everybody else. And so we deal with it. So that's the only way I can see a handicap system actually working so it seems somewhat more palatable than it is now. But being a 13 handicap and playing a 15 handicap and playing them straight up for three days and then losing by six strokes seems stupid to me. It just doesn't make any sense. So if you happen to be in the same group and you beat them every single day for three days straight, then you won by six strokes. Good on you. And if the guy who's a 15 handicap beats you by three strokes, good on them. They won straight up. At least you're playing from a, a level playing field and everybody knows what that is, right? It's based on your established handicap, but that only works if everybody is turning in every single score. So there, but there's, there's, there's two types of handicap, I mean, sandbaggers in this deal, right? There's, the, there's the, the sandbaggers who always turn in higher scores, and they're either, you know, they're either playing well and then adding a bunch of scores at the end. Those are the worst, right? Now, nah, they're all bad. But those, I mean, those guys are just straight-up cheaters, right? You, you shoot an 80, and, but you put in an 89? Well, that's terrible. That's a straight-up dishonest. They say you can learn a lot about somebody on the golf course, that's probably what you learn the most, right? That they're flat out liars if they turn in bad scores. Then there's the guy that goes out and plays poorly on purpose, right? They're the guys that probably three putt every green if they're playing well or the last five holes. So their score really is an 89, but they should have shot an 80, but they kind of made sure that they're protecting their handy, handicap because the club championship's coming up and they really want to win that net division, right? It's, it, their identity is somehow or another tied all up in winning some kind of a tournament and being patted on the back by all their buddies for winning something that they really didn't win. If you won a net tournament, you didn't win anything. You, you got the booby prize, right? The guy who won did not win net. They won gross. Okay, that's the only champion. Everybody else are losers from that point down. You are not a winner if you win a net division. I don't care. I have never been impressed by somebody who wins net. It makes no sense to me. None. So you've got those types of, those are types of sandbaggers where they just cheat on their score, right? Then you've got these glamour handicap people, which they make less sense than at least with the cheaters that have a higher handicap than they really have, you kind of get where they're coming from, where they, they just have no self-esteem and they just want to win sometimes. And so they have put in bad scores in order so they can win, right? You can kind of get that. You feel sorry for them, but at least you can kind of understand it. I have less, I really don't understand somebody. And again, I guess it's tied up into self-esteem, but I don't get the guy that comes to you. And, and this is here, here's an easy way to identify who these people are right? They hear you play golf and they saunter up to you and they'll say, what do you play to? Right? What do you play to? If you ever hear, what do you play to? 
your response to that question is, it's tricky. Because if you tell them your real handicap and it's lower than the one they were going to make up when they told you, then they're not going to tell you the made up handicap. And that's completely fascinating information, right? Just from a psychological perspective. You just kind of want to see what they say they are. Because then you can add, and it's always nice, whatever they give you, you can usually add, if it's, you know, if they say they're a two, you probably add, you know, five onto that. They're probably more like an eight, maybe a 10. If they tell you they're a 10, they're for sure a 20 to 25. So that's kind of the, that's kind of how you gauge it for the glamour handicap folks. But so when they ask you that, what do you play to? You get that question. The easiest thing to do is just add 20 to whatever your handicap really is, right? So say it's a five. What do you play to? You come back with a 25 and then they'll come and tell you they play to a five, which really means it's probably more like a 15. And then you kind of know exactly what you're dealing with. But that, that question, what do you play to, indicates that somebody is so wrapped up into their handicap that they're trying to figure out the pecking order here. And they want to hear how good you are. You being a, um, a well-adjusted person who really doesn't care what your handicap is and your identity isn't all wrapped up into your performance, can then do a, what we call a golf OB lie or a white lie. And that is just add 20 to your handicap just to hear what they say. Because if you come back, if they, if they were going to tell you a five and you're a two and you come back and say, well, I'm a two and they were going to lie to a five because they're really a 15, then you're not going to figure it out. You're not going to hear it. And so then you don't get the truth. And, and, you know, it's really all about getting to the truth in this life. Now, it's always nice after that to let them know, oh, you know what? I, I guess I misunderstood the question. I am actually a five. And then if they've told you something right around there, you'll still have a good conversation. If they've told you something, you know, 10 to 15, so quite a bit higher than a five, then it's going to be a little uncomfortable because they are not the dominant dog in this pecking order anymore. And they're not comfortable speaking from that place. So your conversation's probably going to fall on its face pretty quickly. Now, if you tell them you're a five and they've told you they're a two, they're still, you know, top dog and they're feeling good about themselves. Although deep down, I think that they die a little bit inside because they know they're not a two. They know that you're better than them because you're a five and they're really a 15. And so they've got a lot of sort of internal dialogue going on. So the conversation's going to suffer, right? Just psychologically, they're not going to be in the best place, right? So those are the things to look at when you're talking about your handicap. So the glam, and here's the problem with the glamour handicap guys, is that when you go out and play with these guys, they will be all talk to start, and then they will not play very well. They'll play to their handicap. And again, this is assuming, um, well, it's not assuming anything. They have put in scores that are way lower. And I, I, we have guys at our club that will count their mulligans, right, as their final score. Right, knock one OB and then hit the second one in the fairway, put it on the green and make the putt. And then rather than taking a bogey, they take the birdie, you know, that kind of stuff, right? So they come in shooting these great scores. Everybody thinks they're amazing players, but they're also the ones that usually don't go out and play with anybody and they skip the tournaments, right? The gross tournaments, they won't play, they won't play in the championship group because they know they're going to shoot uh, 95 and they don't want the embarrassment, right? So um, but anyway, you go out and play with these glamour handicap guys. They're never going to play their handicap. They're going to be making excuses the whole time, which is exhausting, right? An excuse for every bad shot. And that can be from the baby cry, cried all night to it's really stressed out at work to I, I've been so busy, I haven't been able to make it to the range to my arm hurts to whatever, right? It's going to be a, a myriad of excuses the whole round long. It gets rather annoying. And, and we all know what's going on. You're just not as good as your handicap, and we all know it. A, a glamour handicap person has never fooled anybody ever. And so they look rather silly playing a game to uh, not to a level that they say they can play to. And, and okay, what's the point? Look, golf is such a beautiful game. Golf is the ultimate game when it comes to becoming skilled at something. Golf is the ultimate game where you can take, play unconscious golf and get to a really good place 
and play well, it's not about the score. It's not about the performance. It's about the experience. It's about how much are you enjoying getting to know yourself. So I have such a hard time with these handicaps. Ugh. Boy, if you haven't, if you haven't been able to, to get that from the podcast, I apologize. We can try again later. Anyway, here are my recommendations. Please, everybody, within the sound of my voice, if you're going to establish a handicap, turn in every score, the real score. Please, just play by the rules. Handicaps stink, but they stink a lot more when we're not playing by the rules of the handicap. Now, clubs, please, don't go stroke by stroke. Can you please start grouping us based on our handicap? If I'm a nine, I would rather play a one straight up, right, than an eight when I have a stroke over them over the course of 18. I, I do not like that feeling that you've given me a stroke. I just want to play this guy straight up, please. It's how every other sport is. There's just something wrong with the way we do it right now. So, so put us into groups of similar skill levels, just like every other sport in the world does it. That would be, those would be my recommendations. And my final recommendation to those who insist on sandbagging and you know who you are, would you please start wearing white belts? Okay, I'm gonna make an exception here. I hate white belts. I think they are a travesty to all things everywhere. White belts are a disaster on the golf course. Nobody should wear them. They are long, thin flags of surrender. That's how I feel about them. They are the worst. I don't know who in the world decided these things were acceptable. But they have made a lot of money off of really making us look really bad for a really long time. And it's got to stop. Except if we can use these hideous fashion devices to identify the sandbaggers, then that's great. Then I get it. I never want to wear a, a white belt. I never want anybody who's really serious about golf and about playing well and performance to ever wear a white belt. But you know what? I'm okay with the people that are either gla glamour handicap folks and sandbagging that way or are just total sandbaggers and do not have a handicap reflective of their skill level. It's way, way beyond that so they can win everything. You folks, please wear white belts. That would be fantastic because essentially you have surrendered to common decency. So let's just mark yourselves, make it obvious for the rest of us to know who you are. It would be so helpful. And honestly, it would be much easier to accept y'all because at least you're honest about being dishonest. And it's, again, it's just about getting to the truth. So that's, that's my tirade for the day. Again, for you sandbaggers who may have been offended, stop sandbagging or wear white belts. Two choices, wear white belts or stop sandbagging. Otherwise, everything I said is completely true. And sometimes the truth hurts. So thank you for listening in. For those who I've offended, um, I hope you sleep well tonight. And for those who I didn't offend, I hope you sleep better. Okay, I'm, I'm with you guys. The non-sandbaggers love you. As always, please remember, with Data Access Golf, better data, better feedback, better honest scores always means better golf. Thanks. Thanks for listening to Data Access Golf with Aaron Stewart. Check us out online at dataaccessgolf.com and we'll see you on the next episode.